Eco fuzz going great guns. Boom, look at those. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> this is nuts. I've never seen this before. What on earth is that? What is it? It's a broad bean. It's completely yellow. <laughs> what? Is it an albedo? Who knows? It seems to be growing quite well. Let's plant it and see what happens. Gonna give things a nice water in here later. I understand a lot of people uh, don't like how compost bins look, but this is a perfect example of how to make quite a, a beautiful compost bin. This is just using willow from little cuttings that we planted last spring. And so this is just what we could do. By this time next year, we could probably have five or six of these at this height. It looks absolutely stunning. You just kind of get your bit of wood and you just weave it through and you keep building it up. It's a nice alternative to everything else. And the other thing, if you've got weeds growing about, just chuck them straight back onto the compost, like this dock. Dock is actually a very, very high, highly nutritious weed. It's almost a bit like uh, comfrey in a sense, in terms of having a really big taproot bringing up minerals and so such a useful weed to have for the compost pile. So we've been going through a few different iterations of a various mini greenhouse design. This is the one before we finalized with having an extra support. But the main thing which you might find quite useful is we've got these little kind of pistons here, just like you get on the, on the boot or in America, the trunk of, a, of your car. So it holds it up really nice. And so because we made it, because it is just, you know, a little bit of a kind of concept piece, we actually thought we're always struggling for space to raise seedlings. So we'll just keep this here so we can start off a load of seeds uh, that are growing through, um, which is looking nice. But it's really important to just make sure you have a bit of ventilation on any day that's going to potentially get a little bit too hot. But in terms of a very simple design, using two by three wood and some hoops. These uh, pistons work amazing. What have you got? I don't know, I just, I collect tables. So this here is a, a white kind of fold out table, which is very useful for like a little potting bench or whatever you need. But in here we've put in some postcrete and we're just gonna create a bit more of a permanent table setup. So this is where during our volunteer days, we can serve Sam's delicious food. Um, and, and so we kind of owe Sam's food respect to give him a proper nice large table versus one of those which we've used before in the past. And so, yeah, it's, it's very much like the practicality side, the experience side, but just, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to having this ready because the other thing about that is that it's just an absolute eyesore. Oh, there's a massive bumblebee on this. Oh my gosh. If you could try and get that. It's huge. This honestly feels like, almost like the end of summer where everything is just flowering, yet it is April. And I think that sometimes there's I kind of feel like there's this kind of balance to strike. You can make the polytunnel beds nice and ready for the tomatoes. Or for me, I just like to keep some things in just to let them flower. It's amazing for the pollinators, especially at this time of year, apart from all of the dandelions are out in the field, dandelion and ronen, um, it's just so nice to give them lots of options. So a lot of these, this is, uh, this is um, I got tatsoi and a Chinese cabbage that is going to flower and then the borage there. And I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen with this, which is, uh, well, I've got kohlrabi here, little bit of cabbage, 
you know, these, all these flower shoots are completely edible. So it's another crop because sometimes you can get a little bit fed up of leaves. So having something like a flower shoot, which, which has a lot more sweetness is very nice. Plus you're creating that space for the pollinators and it just makes the, it just makes the polytunnel very pleasant place to be in rather than kind of a very kind of industrial, perfectly laid out beds that are bare, ready for tomatoes. Having this color is so nice. Something that's very much surprised me this year is how well coriander overwinters. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but it's just something that I hadn't really tried. And I remember shocking my dad in January when I brought him some fresh coriander. And so this variety here is called Slow Bolt. I actually got it from Premier Seeds. Just thought it seemed interesting and I really feel it stood up to its name. These beds, we've had a lot of kind of warm weather here in the polytunnel. They haven't had that much water and they have indeed been slow to bolt. I got the first kind of example of a flower shoot starting to appear. So I can either keep on top of these or let it flower. It's another beautiful thing for the pollinators. Um, you can obviously eat the green seeds of coriander, which is an absolute delicacy. But this is just turning into a coriander forest. So I kind of need to like try and make the most of it. Maybe you have to give it away because it's a huge amount of coriander here. All right, so we're in the experimental garden. One of the experiments that we're doing is trying to see what happens when you buy seeds of the same variety from a load of different seed companies. And to actually see if there's any difference between apparently being the claimed same variety and what happens. And so these two end beds here are gonna be dedicated to that. We're gonna do peas and radish and something else that I've forgotten. <laughs> but I just wanna give this a little bit of a weed. We grew a huge amount of brassicas in here last year. And I wanna be very minimal with the compost. And for the whole of the garden, the experimental garden, in order to make it as accurate as possible, I'm just gonna be using the same brand, which is this Melcourt. It's a all purpose peat free compost. I buy for about £4.50 a bag, which isn't bad. The way I get that is from a local builder's merchants because there's a, uh, there's a garden centre near me that sells it for about twice as much, which um, I don't think is very fair at all to gardeners. And so I'm just going to go through, just do a very quick blitz of the weeds, and then it'll be time to apply, I think I'll add probably about one bag per bed, see how that goes, rake it out. But because so much compost was added to these last year, the fertility of them is pretty high and it's a very nice texture of soil. It almost feels like, a, I don't know, like crumbs of like chocolate cake in a sense. And that's exactly what you're looking for. The main reason why we started at the site is the potential to have the space in which to undertake as many different trials and experiments as possible. And so this experimental garden of 12 beds is only the very kind of beginning of that. And what I'd like to do is, uh, if there's anything you want experimented, to just maybe put them down below in the comments and then we can see about what other trials we can do. Because there's always things where I think, you know, like with potatoes, is it worth chitting potatoes? I really don't think so, but trying side by side just to see what happens because sadly, most experiments are focused on field scale gardening, but when you're gardening more on a domestic level in beds or in an allotment, that's where a lot of trials are missing because there's, there's a lot more, uh, it's a very different approach to growing. I know a lot of field scale people that grow potatoes and they don't bother with chitting, which is why I thought, I don't bother, but it's always useful to know if there's something little that we can change and it makes a big impact in terms of the results that we expect, then it's absolutely worth testing to see what happens. So this here is ready. I'm gonna now just cut that open. 
I really don't need that much compost. So this is 50 litres of compost. Break up all of the big bits. And then I'm going to get a tarmac rake to spread this out. So this is a tarmac rake, which is kind of like a garden rake, but a million times better because it's got some weight behind it. You can get them wider as well. They're also just made out of solid metal. And with the rake, I'm at, usually when I'm actually using a rake, I'd say 80% of the time, I'm using the back of the rake rather than the teeth because you've got that flat surface which makes it much easier for spreading nicely. When I do use the teeth is when I kind of turn it around to break up any kind of bigger bit than the compost. But now I'm just doing a very light layer. This is just the faintest of layers. Just add a little something. It doesn't have to be much. And then to finish off, because I do like to take a little bit of pride whenever possible, is just give it a gentle tap down. So that is basically a, a bit of a before and an after, so quick in terms of preparing a bed ready for planting and it really takes no time at all and also it's just minimal compost. So seeing this then gives me the motivation to do that because I see that blank canvas, I see all the potential for them like oh no I gotta weed it. So uh, yeah it's just uh, these weird little mind games that I play when I'm in the garden to have as much fun as possible. <laughs> I didn't even plant it, it's like Blue Peter. Yeah, Here's one I did earlier. So. <laughs> no, I'm talking about pride, I really should cut this grass. So at the moment, we're in the market garden area, looking a little bit sorry for itself, have just abandoned it over winter, but we're not running exactly anything commercial for the moment. <laughs> Got some more purple sprouting broccoli coming through. I thought that was cabbage, so that's a nice surprise. Sometimes when you forget about something then you come back you get filled with surprises another one is this stunning rocket that has overwintered and you've got the rocket flowers so you know you could get, beat yourself up about not keeping on top of things but then you get these surprises that wouldn't otherwise have happened I'll have to try and remember that later so market garden the the goal was just get a bit of space to produce a bit more food and two things to chat about. Firstly, it's getting over the idea of overwhelm, looking at all of the weeds here. And so I just like to split things up into, into chunks and then start working on it. So usually it's a case of choose a bed, choose an end, measure out a square meter, get that done and just keep on top of it little and often. And so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna start down this end where the kohlrabi is currently flowering I'm going to kind of work around it as much as possible and it's it's ridiculous the amount of food that is just a few meters out in front of me all of these are kohlrabi flowers again edible and we suddenly realize that this year because we've done all of the hard work we're going to be kind of massively upscaling through a lot of the experiments the amount of food that we produce and so it's now come to the realization that we're probably going to have to find a couple of whales, whales, sorry. <laughs> I just, start, I could, I'll happily talk about my country at any given opportunity. Um, but no, I'm talking about gardening here. Uh, there's a couple of ways that we're going to kind of uh, deal with those gluts. Well, three ways. Sam's test kitchen, which is very, probably the most exciting way. Um, also, there's a, a local kind of food bank where we're looking at doing freezer meals that are, that are pre-made and then they're just in the freezer so they don't have that expiry date and people can just have those. And the other one is to potentially look at creating our own more kind of like veg box scheme for foodies. So for people that don't mind having weird things like kohlrabi flowers, and to just add a little bit of something exciting because 
it's something that I've, I've always told myself I, I'd never want to do a veg box scheme just myself. However, now that we're a team of people and there's a lot of people who are interested and they're always asking, hey, how can, uh, you know, can we buy your produce? Even local restaurants and stuff, yet we aren't set up for that. However, sometimes you've got to listen to demands and there's, there seems to be quite an interesting demand for fresh produce that is seasonal and a little bit interesting. You know, we're going to be growing a bunch of tomatoes this year which also always offer interesting flavours and so we're just going to do a trial. We've got 15 spaces for this veg box scheme between July and July and October, four full months. We're just going to see what happens, see what the uptake's like and then change it from there. But it's not just going to be veg, it's going to be all the herbs, uh, it's going to be a load of fruit as well. It's a good excuse for me to try new things, which is something I do anyway. And now I feel like I have more of a reason rather than just feeding myself, which is a valid reason, but this is a lot of space here and, and there's a responsibility on our shoulders as a team to make sure that we're also nourishing the community.